Would you like to master Excel charts and graphs and take your data viz skills to the next level? I'm Chris Dutton, and I've helped hundreds of thousands of students just like you bring their data to life. And right now you Okay, okay. Hmm.
తమ్యం సార్ ఏమైనా మాట్లాడండి వినిపిస్తుంది వినిపిస్తుంది హలో హలో వినిపిస్తుంది సార్ సరే సరే సరే
Welcome participants. Good morning. Welcome participants. Welcome to the today's one day national webinar on industry academia, innovative practices and perspectives for the prospect of students.
కూడా వచ్చింది
Jackson, hello. Sir, good morning. Sam, sir, can you hear me, sir? Uh, sir, yes, sir. Super, super. Okay, sir. I just thought I should check it. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. sir just two, three minutes, sir. No problem. No problem, sir. Okay, no problem, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir, it is visible.
Dear learned fraternity, a pleasant morning and warm welcome to you all for this one day national webinar on industry, academia, innovative practices and perspectives for the prospect of students. I'm glad to introduce myself. I'm Dr. T. Malati Gabriel, assistant professor and head department of English and internal quality assurance cell coordinator of PVK and Government College, Autonomous Chitur, Andhra Pradesh. Let me start with an invocation to the Almighty for protecting us and guiding us to combat COVID-19 challenges. It is, I feel, elated to quote the words of uh, Rabindranath Chakur, this is my prayer to thee, my Lord. Strike, strike at the root of penury in my heart. Give me the strength lightly to bear my joys and sorrows. Give me the strength to make my love fruitful in service. The internal quality assurance cell of PVK and Government College feels delighted and honored to have diverse participants from different disciplines, which include students, research scholars, soft skill trainers, professors, and principals. I also feel honored to share that this August gathering are from different states. For, uh, let me quote those states, Gujarat, Orissa, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Telangana, and Andhra Pradesh. Let the session begin with a glance about PVK and Government College, Chitur. May I invite Dr. S. V. Ramesh Kumar, the coordinator of college, to present it. Over to Ramesh, sir. Good morning to one all. I welcome all of you to PVK Government College. The college was established in 1961 with the philanthropic contributions of Bhakti's Mekadikshna Manaidu and others. The college motto is Vidyaya Amrutam Ashmutu. It means cherish the nectar of knowledge through education. During the past 59 years of academic excellence, the college has been educating and training thousands of students. Many alumni of this college are serving the society in various capacities. This college is as Chittu District Nodal College and it is functioning as Chittu District Resource Center. The college is accredited with NAC in March 2017. Achieved autonomous status in July 2018. The college received Best Swachya Kala Sala Award from the AP State Government in September 2018. The college offers UG, PG, and certificate courses. Under UG courses, BSc with eight group combinations, BCom with two group combinations and BA with two group combinations. There are nine PG courses, MSc Botany, Geology, Physics, Organic Chemistry and Mathematics, MCOM Regular and Financial Management, MA English and Economics. There are four certificate courses in 
water analysis, apiculture, mushroom culture, and computers. College offers ICT based teaching and learning through virtual classes, digital classes, e classes, and smart classes. There are four virtual classes, four digital classes, three e classes, and a smart class. There is a cyber camp. It is a computer center where students can access to internet. They can prepare to study projects and assignments in this center. There are four computer labs where the students will be trained in different computer programs and languages. For the academic development of the students, the college takes up many academic activities like bridge courses, study hours, Remedial classes, student study projects, literary competitions, industrial visits, field trips, expert lectures, online evaluation, etc. Regularly, as per timetable, we conduct study hours from 4 to 5 every day in the evening. We also conduct seminars, conferences, and workshops at college level by inviting experts from academic institutions and uh, Industry, Jawahar Knowledge Center of the college takes care of placement training and uh, campus drives. Many students are being selected for different companies. The college has well-stocked library with uh, 70,000 books. It is a center for learning of this college where many students get ready for entrance tests and competitive exams. The college has a central air-conditioned auditorium. It is epicenter for co-curricular, extracurricular, and uh, cultural activities. There is a yoga center in the campus. It trains the students in yoga and meditation. There is a women's hostel. It can accommodate more than 300 women students of UE and PG courses. The physical education has, department has 30 acres of playground, indoor stadium, coaching facility for sports and games, men gym and women gym. Students, the college not only focuses on academic progress, but also it focuses on overall development of the students. There are many student support services like NSS, NCC, JKC, Eco Club, Red Ribbon Club, Youth Red Cross, Students Disability Cell, Women Empowerment Cell, Parent Guidance Cell, and PV Clean Alumni Association. All these student support services they coordinate for the overall development of the students. During 2019-20, the college achieved 180% growth in UG admissions and we hope for the best in future. All your blessings. Able administration, highly qualified faculty with the blend of experience and energy, students with the sincerity and dedication, all work together here for the development of the college and we have been achieving good academic results. The process of lighting the lamps and educating the minds continues. Thank you.
morning sir yes let me give the objective of this one day national webinar look at the cartoon in this cartoon in two different situations an interview is conducted and at the first cartoon the candidate feels confused tense and he is not ready to face the interview and in the second cartoon the interviewers feels happy about the performance of the candidate the objective of this webinar is to make our students who are studying in higher education institutes to get ready for the job market yes it is the why the purpose of conducting this webinar it is a first of kind in uh, government institutions in chitur district in degree colleges and it is the quality initiative of internal quality azure cell of pvk and government autonomous college its purpose is to brainstorm the opportunities and challenges for industry academia interface it also paves the way for the prospect of students for career development learning outcome the nat and every every parameter has been stressing has been driving the point that there should be a learning outcome we all gather here to learn something let me give the a brief cameo of the learning outcome of this national webinar to make the students and the faculty to do research related to industry aspects and to get intern placements next it also helps for the faculty to introduce curriculum to introduce a different curriculum which suits to the need of the day and finally this webinar i hope the insights the deliberations presented by the resource person will definitely open the avenues for employment opportunities next i would like to invite the principal and iqc chairman of pvk and government autonomous college to deliver his presidential address a good morning to all the participants at the outset i congratulate our iqc team for this quality organizing this webinar as one of the best practices during the covid-19 scenario as a matter of positive aspect this crisis has really taught us many lessons and go ahead in techno savvy skills in tune with globalized situation as per the nag revised quality framework 2017 industry academy collaboration is the order of the day in curriculum designing updation of skills and for providing employment opportunities to the main stakeholders of the institution the role of industry in higher education institutions is commendable and need of the hour my my warm regards to the today's resource person professor kartikeyan garu and i wholeheartedly welcome welcome him 
to share his expertise to the participants on behalf of my mother institution i am extending my best wishes to the participants to explore intellectual insights in terms of quality enhancement quality sustainment in the institutions from this webinar good luck have a nice day amma i think so amma hello ha uh, yes sir yes sir it's so much yes yes thank you sir uh, i deem it privilege to introduce the resource person for today's webinar professor kartikeyan is an associate professor of english in velur institute of technology velur he is an elt and soft skills trainer and also acts as a hr consultancy he has international relations and also had international teaching experience in summer school program to his credit adds highly regarded educator award in 2018 issued by american leadership board montona united states of america he is our ipsc external member too and his expertise uh, his innovative ideas are always with the ipsc of pvk and government uh, samuel john sir assistant professor department of computer science to give a few resume about professor kartikeyan over to samuel sir over to katrin sir sir you can start uh sir can you hear me yes sir yes sir you can start sir sir captain sir jan sir yes, captain sir. sir only video no audio very clear if the 
and you can check Sir, just check the internet connection, sir. Uh, Sam, sir? Yes, yeah, sir, yes, sir. Now. Sir, you are not clear, sir, your video and uh, audio as well. Sir, we are not, we are not able to hear you. And picture also quality not good, sir. Yes, sir, yes, Right. Sure. Sir, can you hear me now? Yeah, yes, we are able to hear, but uh, have you switched off your video, sir? Yeah, yeah, I have turned off my video to okay, ensure okay. that uh, they can yeah. listen to my voice very well. Okay, sir, okay, okay. Right. Uh, uh, hope, hope, everybody. Right. Uh, very, very good morning. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Jay Karthikeyan. Uh, I work in VIT and uh, this is my 13th year of my experience here in VIT. I started my career in Hyderabad. I was in British Council of Hyderabad for two years uh, plus. And uh, I came back to British Council Chennai. I was there for two years. I was giving training for uh, language uh, with reference to IELTS examinations and other examinations conducted by British Council. Then I worked in SRM University Chennai for one year. Then uh, in 2008, I have joined uh, VIT University as uh, the trainer for international students. Uh, sir, after no, two no, years sir, sir. of... Sir, good morning. Yeah. Uh, after uh, two years of training, uh, I was uh, elevated as assistant director for uh, international relations. I was in the post for four years, where I was taking care of uh, industry and educational partnership uh, across the globe. Uh, right now, I am uh, a member of a research and innovation team in the VIT University. And uh, my trust area is more on integrating industry and international university in research. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, let me say a very big thank to Dr. G. Anandariti Garu, the principal of uh, uh, the college, who is an eminent uh, and uh, uh, man of Gogart attitude. Uh, if, if, if we make a request to do something without even hesitating, he, he always says yes, make things happen. So I, I like that kind of quality in him and uh, uh, I should appreciate Dr. T. Maladi Gabriel who is the IQAC head and uh, other uh, members of IQAC uh, in the college, Dr. S. V. Ramesh Kumar and uh, and other members. Uh, I should also thank uh, uh, Dr. Samuel John, uh, who is an expert in uh, connecting all of us. And we always have problems with the connectivity when it comes to internet. 
by the time we started it was very good but later on uh, the internet really sucks so that is only only problem when we have uh, online meetings and all this stuff but things will change right uh, i'm i'm very happy to meet uh, 66 uh, of the members who are uh, participating in this webinar uh, right now and uh, hope uh, we will be uh, having some more participants who will be joining uh, in later times uh, this may be due to some connectivity issues or uh, uh, some of their personal works which they will be doing all right um, so this program uh, is entitled industry academy uh, innovative practices and first for the prospect of students. Um, so oh, it is a, it's a part of IQAC, though it's a part of IQAC. IQAC is uh, all about uh, uh, delivering the best to students to ensure higher competence uh, among the institutions. That's the whole idea uh, of, uh, of this. Uh, Samsung to start a research partnership with uh, industry and uh, how our academician, our curriculum can be designed to meet the needs of the industry and what are the places where we have a scope for employment and the better opportunities for our students as well as scholars uh, who depend on us. So these are the target areas which uh, we will be focusing uh, today. Um, so, we share my content with you so that um, you can easily understand what, what we are doing. Companies across the globe. Uh, so from this, it's very clear that industry is always looking for partnership with institutions like us. Uh, I could see from the list of uh, participants that uh, some 16 of us are uh, doctorates uh, who must be supporting our scholars to complete their PhD. And I could see uh, some eight or nine of us uh, professors who are on the verge of completing our PhD or uh, carrying out our uh, research works. And I, I could also notice that there are about 40 students uh, uh, who have invested uh, today's time uh, just to know what is this webinar all about? Is it going to help me? So I can, I can assure you that uh, uh, the information that I'm going to share with you will be useful for uh, all the stakeholders, including teachers, principal, principals, scholars, students, as well as uh, trainers. We all must have seen these kind of points. Uh, resource mobilization for research, innovation, ecosystem, extension activity, collaboration, strategy development, and the deployment. Uh, for students, this may be new, and for uh, most of the teachers and principals and IQAC members, you must have seen this uh, in the IQAC form that we fill every time uh, when we submit to all agencies across the India as well as sometimes to abroad. Okay, so if you closely look into the components that is expected from the institution, it's very clear that government agencies as well as uh, Ministry of Higher Education, they wanted us to have a very cordial relationship with industries. This, in turn, is going to help us a lot. So, I want to give you a small uh, the impact. 
if I can uh, I can tell you what is impact all about. Impact is all about uh, our own collaboration, our own extension with industry as well as academia. So we influence how we make it more memorable, how we make uh, make our partnership practical, how we make our uh, research actionable, and how we work together in transforming new ideas. So, so this is a key factor that we all should uh, should have when we think about industry and uh, academia interaction. Right. Um, for, for your simplified understanding, uh, we have uh, divide the whole uh, discussions uh, or information into criteria: public sector and private sector. How public sector is going to help us, and how private sector is going to help us by means of funding uh, and other information. So this is a holistic idea. So I'm going to share this information with uh, every one of you. Right. Uh, for uh, those of you teachers, uh, principals, and uh, IQSC members, uh, we all must have heard because uh, I know this is uh, uh, the participants are from different disciplines and uh, different uh, places across India. We also have uploaded some information on funding agencies uh, and other such information in the website, but we have to know what these funding agencies can do to our development. For example, we all know DST. We always say we get projects from DST, we get funding from DST. But one thing we have to know is uh, what are the different organizations in DST which can really give us uh, funding? And uh, each of these organization uh, under agencies under DST are meant for specific purpose. Uh, so, for example, Technology Development Board has its own functions. It, ha it, it has its own limitations in giving funds. Similarly, all other boards which I have mentioned, all these works under uh, DST. So, I have also given the website. So, as far as teachers, uh, as far as researchers are concerned, Let's say that you work in, uh, in uh, you work as a research scholar in pharmaceutical, and I really want you to log into drug and pharmaceutical research programs. Uh, as of now, if you can uh, open another system, log in to Google and just type it, DST drug and pharmaceutical research programs. As on date, we have seven projects which are available for research scholars and the teachers uh, who can apply for grants. The grants varies from uh, 1 lakh to 50 lakhs uh, as on date. And, and we have uh, policy research centers, uh, which, which works under DST. Again, the policy research centers will assist us in carrying out uh, uh, different, uh, dif different projects and how to go for pattern and all these things. So everything is available online. So what I want to convey here for teachers and scholars, uh, please ensure that... Uh, uh, there are different organizations under each uh, agencies of government, and uh, most of us are not uh, applying it. Uh, these research grants, many of us have a wrong notion that uh, uh, only if you are in IIT or NIT or any central university, you will be getting funds. That is a wrong connotation. Uh, please change your mind. We have a lot many funds. Uh, last year, government has given, DST has given a small uh, uh, information to the public saying that uh, only 60% of the projects were used to buy uh, researchers and professors outside, whereas uh, remaining, uh, uh, re remaining, uh, re remaining, uh, remaining 40% of the uh, remaining 40% uh, of the projects uh, are not used. So let us make the point that uh, we we try to apply for these projects. Okay, what about students? Why do you think students need to know something about BSC? Uh, I, I'm not sure how many of you are doing your undergraduate, uh, that is BSc, BCom, BBA, BA English, or how many of you are doing MSc or PG programs. Uh, we have a lot many short programs uh, for uh, students uh, in these agencies. So, so what I wish is that uh, based on your department, please consult with your teachers and uh, you just log into any one of these websites so that you also will have a short term programs uh, very very uh, fundings for uh, small innovative ideas 
uh, let's say that uh, as a student you have a small idea to create a chip or you you can create some software uh, uh, which is socially useful uh, we have we have uh, grants which are given by startup research grant uh, young scientist startup research grant if you log in here to, uh, into startup research grant uh, which is especially for young scientist like you in uh, ug or pg uh, you can get uh, seed funds seed funds are uh, funds which are given at the initial stage then you have to show your um, prototype then based on your prototype again uh, more funds can be given uh, in my institution uh, many students used to apply for this uh, uh, startup research grants and uh, as of now we have eight different projects which are run by students uh, as on date so so it all depends on how we are going to make use uh, of the grants which are available uh, by government agencies uh, again every one of us know about uh, typhac knowledge information forecasting and assessment council again uh, if you see there are five different bodies uh, which works under typhac Uh, for different uh, programs and uh, they they emphasize more into mechanical uh, automobile uh, biotechnology bioprocessing and and even agriculture department so so they have lot many programs uh, and even if you can do a little bit on uh, any softwares related to agriculture or nanotechnology biomedical you have lot of funds Uh, so this is common to all researchers, students, uh, as well as um, uh, academicians. So, so, so you can you can uh, you can always uh, log into uh, one of these components based on your uh, research interest, and you can go ahead with it. And we have some of the private sectors, uh, for example, Fiki. Uh, we all must know about Fiki. F I C C I Fiki dot com. Uh, plus uh, national association of software service uh, which is nascom and the cii uh, these are private sectors not uh, completely government body but uh, again uh, uh, again they have fun- they, they have lot of funds to be uh, given for students teachers researchers and other academicians so so please uh, uh, make a note of it uh, we will transfer this information to you personally uh probably uh, the iqac team must have all your emails uh, i'm sure they will transfer the information which i'm going to share here to your email uh, by which at least some of us can make a try uh these are again uh, uh, some of the councils uh, which are giving funds uh, i i have started my presentation uh, by sharing the information first related to funds because uh, when we say research industrial collaboration all these matters because uh, uh, the agencies in dst the agencies in typhac uh, fiki nascam cii and all these organization they really wanted educational institute to work with government so 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 sorry educational institute to work with industries so that's the reason why i have classified uh, Uh, this uh, information uh, as the first level of uh, discussion with you right uh right sir when when uh, when we talk about research uh, many of us from science departments we say sir we always talk about research what can we do without funds over i showed you earlier uh, those are the funds which are uh, given by government agencies as well as private sectors but what you see in your screen right now uh, Uh, is uh, the list of websites which can direct you to different organizations which can give you lot of fun let's say that you are in chemistry department you want to do a small research the funding may uh, that research may be very uh, useful to a particular society maybe on making soap i'm giving an example let's say that you are from chemistry department uh, you have a you have some idea to make soap and to be given to all poor people Uh, to protect from virus so so you may not have fund but please log into uh, websites like funds funds for ngo.org ashirwadam so if you just log into the websites they will tell you uh, which funding agencies can fund for your ideas there are a lot of funds uh, which are given for society development if you log into uh, other than the dad see the first one dad 
Uh, DAD is a funding uh, opportunity which is given for most of the science subjects, engineering subjects, uh, because DAD is one of the funding agencies of uh, government of German higher education. And uh, you have a lot many chances to get funds because uh, this DAD.India is exclusively for uh, funding Indian scholars, students, uh, and teachers. Other than the first website, if you log into all other websites, you will get links of lot many agencies which gives funds from 5,000 to 50 lakhs. Okay, so you may be asking, sir, why do they give fund? Uh, the main reason for giving fund is to make sure that you have an idea and they can realize the, your idea into a product. Uh, this kind of fund can be uh, received by students no matter if you are a BSc student or if you are a MSc student, if you are a professor or research scholar, anybody can apply funds. Uh, in 2019, uh, in VIT, we have got almost uh, 804 funds only from these websites. Whatever websites you see here, there are about 804 uh, links which you will be getting from these websites. And we have got more than 800 projects, 891 or 96, if I am not wrong. Uh, the funds varies from uh, 50,000 to a maximum of 14 lakhs. Uh, most of the funds were given for physics, chemistry, uh, six for mathematics, uh, 18 for English, uh, then 14 for commerce, uh, 81 for business sectors, uh, and uh, and other are distributed towards some engineering product. So, so what I emphasize here, so we will be sharing all the information like what are the different organizations under government and what are the places where you can get funds. Uh, the reason for starting with funds, because without funds, we cannot uh, uh, um, realize um, our products or our uh, items and when we cannot invest more. That, that's what we, I understand. Okay. So, so these are the places where we can really get funds. Why I am talking about uh, getting funds? Why I am talking about getting projects? Uh, the ultimate aim is that whenever you are going to get a fund, obviously you are going to invest that in a research. Whenever you start a research, it is directly going to help the institution. It is directly going to help the individual as well as your research is going to do something with industry, the business. Let's say that you have created a product uh, with the help of a fund. Uh, for example, if you click uh, uh, ed, edisilindia.co.in, uh, they will assist you to partner with industries. You don't have to go to the industry. They will assist you. Uh, they will assist you by giving you funds to do your research, as well as they will tell you the industry partner whom you can really work with. So your, your efforts will be more into research, whereas the agency will assist you to find the right industry. So what happens if you're going to work with the industry? As a student, if you're going to do some small creative project, you're going to get funds from the agency and you're going to work and give the product to the industry. And obviously you're going to get a good job in the same industry. So that is one of the strategy we follow for the last two years in VIT. What we do in VIT Vellur is uh, very simple. Uh, we have something like a paid intern. Paid intern in the sense, uh, so we make students to come out with the products, innovative products, innovative ideas. We showcase them to the industries. And if the industries like the product or ideas, they recruit the student by offering them an internship for six months or nine months or maximum one year. Uh, if the performance is really good, even when they do, before they complete final year, they are recruited by the industry. So the placement gets more. Uh, and industry wanted us uh, to do a lot many innovation like that. So they often have interaction with the placement department as well as the research department. And every year, the number goes high. This year, we have got placements for 2,842 undergraduate students, out of which 1,008 students were recruited only through the innovation. So that is the main, main focus why I am talking about funds, research, and getting to industries. Right.
Um, to be very precise, if I have classified the companies into four different uh, areas, uh, these are the top 50 companies uh, where they give importance to work with Institute. For example, if you say take Dr. Reddy Lab Limited, uh, uh, right now they have collaboration with uh, six institutions. Uh, their emphasis is more on biotechnology, pharmaceutical, and they have their research centers in those institutions itself. Uh, and, and if you go to the next slot, uh, group two, Vipro Limited. So Vipro Limited, uh, they have two kinds of uh, project uh, uh, project base in institutions. They have 27 uh, R&D centers established in the institution, which is fully funded by them. So, so what Vipro does, for example, if you are from engineering colleges, you must be knowing about a concept called Mission 10X. So Mission 10X is one of the product of uh, Vipro where they establish a training center in the institution, they train students and recruit them to their own company. Similarly, Vipro has uh, 27 such projects right now, other than Mission 10X. And uh, it is easy for each and every one of your institution also to have an industry in your own campus. You don't have to invest a lot. So I, I just really mean it. Okay. And uh, probably you must understand, this is how I have classified based on the streams. Uh, and uh, here, if you see, you can ask me, sir, what about physics, chemistry, uh, what about max, what about English? Again, uh, I have generally classified it, but there are uh, many sub-classifications in every industry, and uh, they wanted people from all the discipline. So that is what you all should understand. Okay. Now, now uh, as uh, teachers, as students, uh, we should understand uh, how we look research so so before going to this one i just want to share with you like what are the basic expectation of industry and uh, uh, what are the basic expectation of uh, academic institutions like us so so for example uh, they want to ensure uh, in the university, their expectation. Let's say that is a company called uh, uh, Mr. Mujib, please turn off your uh, uh, audio. Okay. Right. Uh, so, so what company expect, the first expectation is with the content of the uh, syllabus that we use. They wanted the institutions to have a uh, 60% uh, of uh, practicals and 40% uh, of theory, which is supposed to give more enrichment towards the practical they do. And uh, this is the first expectation. Again, I repeat, uh, industry wanted 60% uh, of uh, practicals and 40% uh, of theory, which is going to support that uh, uh, practicals. Uh, number two, they want to ensure uh, students are given this proper training, like how to behave in the workplace. So number one, the content of the syllabus is number one. Number two, if we can train the students uh, on the people skills or soft skills or skills that are required by the industry, well in a herd, industry is going to take them, grab them. Okay. And the, and the third one, solution for concerns. So uh, we have a lot many projects. You know, we give a lot of assignment to students. Uh, we, have, uh, we give a lot of assessments uh, and we give short tests and all this stuff. And uh, what they really wanted to know is that uh, uh, if a student is in postgraduate, they must uh, get exposed themselves to real problems in industry. Let's say a student is from uh, chemistry. Uh, a postgraduate chemistry student is expected to know what are the real-time problems the industry may have, the chemical industry. It is not only chemical industry, even it can be a cement industry where there is a role of chemical engineer. And the chemical... Uh, uh, engineer is going to be in all the place. Engineering doesn't mean it's only B or B Tech, even BSc students or MSc students. So the company wanted the students to know what are the real-time problems they will get in the industry with reference to their course, their core. It can be physics, it can be uh, chemistry, something like that. Okay. Then the last expectation is that how the operational approach, how the education institute uh, uh, is is going to have a, 
a very cordial relationship with the industry in helping them to identify suitable employers so so these are the basic expectation of uh, an industry what industry looks from us the first one industry wanted us, our syllabus to match with their requirements uh, they wanted the students to have all sort of skills uh, it is it's, it's it's simple like getting the students ready to the workplace number two they want the students to get exposure to real time uh, problems in the industry well in ahead and they want to know what sort of uh, relationship will be better to between institution and uh, the industry so these are the basic expectation of the industry right what are the basic expectation of uh, institutes the first institute first problem for any one of our institute is the space so uh, and that too if you are if we are in government institutions we have lot many protocol uh, we cannot just like that uh, build a building or we cannot uh, just like that take a classroom convert that into research centers we have lot of protocol which is related to infrastructure second we may have very good ideas but the uh, thing is that we may not have funds so these are the main uh, thing and uh, this is what we expect from the industry uh, let's say that we approach a company called amron okay uh, uh, as as we have uh, expert students in our post graduate uh uh ma'am some of you are talking please uh, stop your microphones okay right so so the first 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 expectation of uh, the institution is that whether the industry will support us with infrastructure uh, whether the industry will give some sort of funding to start to prepare our students uh, based on the need and and again uh, whether the institution uh, whether the industry will have a mou because when we go for iqsc the iqsc they will be asking you whether you have a mou with industry and it is very difficult for uh, institution to get a mou with the industry because uh, industry serve their own policy they will say ma'am uh, our head office is not approving our all these protocols are there again uh, again that is a very big headache for us and we try to find uh, at least a letter which says that we work with so and so institution so that is a basic expectation of institution to have a authentic letter between institute and industry right now the third point our concern is now we have trained the students we have modified the syllabus based on the expectation of industry how are we going to place the students because uh, today students uh, join the institution uh, with a lot many dreams and one of the first and prior dream is to get placement soon of that degree so so by changing the syllabus by establishing partnership when we fail to give placement uh, it is going to be a very big uh, drawback in our recruitment process it may be for government or it may be for private the 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 first criteria that we want to fulfill is the placements but i can assure you that by by convincing the industry by modifying the content of our syllabus and by preparing the students obviously our placements are going to be high i will also tell how students have to work to make sure that they are going to get good placements right when we when we fail to give placement uh, it is going to be a very big uh, drawback in our recruitment process right so uh, sir please uh, turn off your microphones i can assure okay. you that by by convincing the industry by modifying the content of our syllabus and by preparing the students obviously our placements are um right okay uh, dear students uh, probably you all must be listening and uh, when i talk about placements uh, the main word placement is related to you so you cannot tell you cannot blame an institution if you are not going to get a job please understand this is what i tell to all vitns when they join into vit vellur campus or chennai campus or gopal campus or andhra campus because placement is is all related to you only with your progress what is expected by the industry when it comes to placement first thing is your cgpa or the percentage your cgpa or the percentage that you score talks more about your institution so so number 1 you must have a very pleasant cgpa because uh, some companies expect uh, you to have 65% or 6.5 cgpa some companies expect you to have not less than 8 cgpa so it varies 
but basically for getting into a job market your cgpa should not be less than 8 for getting a ordinary job but for getting extraordinary job your cgpa should not be less than 8 so everything the placement structure starts with your cgpa number 2 what are the other competencies you have what are the other skills you have other than your cgpa are you member of any clubs and chapters whether you are engaging yourself in sports whether you are engaging yourself in activities dance or whether you are member of some uh, some some technical group like ieee so there are many groups many chapters uh, many clubs so this is to uh, this is to ensure that you are not only very good in academics but you are also capable of establishing yourself in other skills like singing dancing running playing or maybe talking so so ensure that the first thing is your cgpa your percentage second thing how you are part of any one of these activities which is skill based right so first criteria is your marks second criteria uh, is your skill other than your studies the third and very important expectation uh, just before 10 days um, uh, during this quarantine because of covid please listen everyone teachers uh, faculty principal iqsc students please listen uh, our team had a discussion with 186 industries across india and 41 industries across the globe uh, what we have understood from the news you must have heard that many companies are sending their people outside uh, many people are losing their jobs i will tell you people who are recruited through agencies they lost the job none of the employer who are directly recruited by the company lost their jobs please understand if you are going to approach an agency for a job then definitely your job is not guaranteed if you are selected by the industry directly then your job is assured so this is what you all should understand and the very important thing in india the job market is going to get wide open there are more jobs for young people like you because after march 27th till date 186 new partnerships have been signed by different states Uh, and the central government in india which is going to get job for 18 lakh young students this is updated news i am telling you so whether you are in bsc whether you are in bcom whether you are in msc phd or if you are working in a private institution like me are looking for a better job this is the right time to focus on the third aspects what is the first aspect your cgpa second aspect is your skill third your r and d experience so if you are a student if you are a research scholar you all should listen me because company wanted you to have exposure towards research okay what is research sir nenu just to bcom chesna sir nenu ippudu just to bsc chesna so nenu etla research chesa sir so again don't have any false opinion about your research can be done by anyone Uh, my my son can do research who is in standard 8 so obviously when a when a small kid in a school can do research we can always do much better research right uh, probably this is a question you should ask your teachers teacher tell me how am i how can i do research i am in first year bcom i am in second year bsc uh, i will tell you a fact uh, all my first year students who are in my class i have 186 first year students in my class everybody have a research paper right now we have published a research paper so that is quite possible don't think it is because of vit nothing it's because of the individual interest if you really think that i am going to get a amazing job when my when i complete my degree it may be bsc it may be msc it may be a phd then you must be really very good in research right i will tell you about a possible research for uh, ug students that is bsc bcom bba students please talk with your teachers regarding uh, survey analysis okay uh, after you complete this program find some time to talk with your teachers uh, on how to write a review paper what is it how to write a review paper because uh, for writing review paper you don't have to know the subject in depth what you are expected to know is you are going to read some information and organize that and publish it so my my 
request to all the undergraduate uh, students including postgraduate student is to start to write review papers uh, when you start to write review papers and publish it you know publish it you are getting benefit your teacher who is assisting you is going to be the co-author for it is going to get benefit and you are going to add this to your resume saying that i worked with my teacher and came out with a publishing like this it shows that you are very good in research you are very good in collaborating with your own teacher so your relationship is very good with the teacher so you will you will also have a very good relationship in the workplace so all these things will help you to get a job confirmation so again i repeat students if you are in any discipline this is the right time for you to start your research writing okay so how much points or how much weightage is given for this 50% your cgpa carries 25% your skills that you acquire carries 10% 50% is for the research work that you do so how much it comes 50 plus 25 plus 10 so so it's almost 85 remaining 50% is for your communication skills that you perform during interviews that's it so what i expect is that research is given high importance and uh, by starting to write some research papers your guarantee uh, for getting a job is assured now let me go back to uh, the post graduate students and the phd scholars uh, for uh, for post graduate uh, i am sure some of you will have a short term internship or mini projects the first thing that you must do uh, please uh, talk with your teachers and if your teachers listening to this please identify industry in your zone if you are from chitur we have uh, we have around 86 industries macro industries and 192 micro industries 804 small scale industries in chitur district alone Uh, other than sri city uh, if you are from other districts of andhra pradesh or if you are from any part of india i'm sure that uh, there will be at least a few industries uh, within 50 km range of your institution and it is we teachers going to assist student to make sure that the student completes a mini project inside the industry so Uh, what we can do is that we can have we can build a relationship with the industry to ensure that our student will get a chance to visit the industry to understand how the industry works right i will tell you a small example from our experience like what we do in vit velo so that uh, this is possible for every one of us you can be from any institution you can be from even a small college in a small town or village that doesn't matter but this will really work Uh, recently i have sent um, some eight of my students in bba uh, to some industries uh, in ambur ambur is uh, well known for leather industry so what i have done uh, i have just uh, sent them uh, first i went to the industry requested them uh, to give some time to talk with the hr so a uh, hr said okay so we will send so all my students first of all went to the hr they met uh, the hr Uh, to know more about uh, what are the opportunities for uh, uh, bba students or what are the opportunities for young graduates in the leather industries so they gave some information so they noted for eight different companies please keep in mind they went to eight industry they noted down for all eight industries then i requested some of the institutions uh, in ambur uh, i spoke with the vice principal hod i requested them to have a small interaction with them and they went and met all these uh, hods and the principals again they made their note on uh, how many students uh, go for a job or placement opportunities okay so they they got all the data so this work was carried out uh, during weekends uh, and we all sat to go together and we made a graph analysis like uh, uh, what is the expectation of industry and, and uh, what is the current status of institution and uh, we were uh, so pathetic to know that uh very few students uh, from 18 uh, 18 institutions in one year and ambur very few students go to the industry whereas the need for students are more i can give you the answer uh companies need 118 graduates they can be from any disciplines 
whereas the students who apply uh, apply to the institutions and the getting a job is only seven so how much gap is there 104 gap is 102 gap so there is a lot of need in the industry and a lot of uh, uh, students are not going there so what i made i made the students to write this into a paper by giving a small introduction uh, what is uh, how many industries they went which place they went uh, that is introduction part second one uh, discussions what are the discussions with the industry discussion with the institution that is part three the next setting is findings uh, what did they find from that? Then result analysis. So again, I tell you, in introduction, they wrote about uh, uh, the industries and uh, institutions they went without mentioning the name. Uh, the second one is expectation of industry. What is the current status of industry after listening to HR? The third concept is uh, uh, what is the uh, uh, what is uh, 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 stu uh, students uh, placements in institution? That is the third topic. Uh, fourth topic is uh, discussion, like what are discussion they had. Then the fifth topic is results and findings, then conclusion. So all the eight papers are selected. Uh, all the eight papers, though the content style is same, the matter is different. So what I did, I have sent this to eight different uh, publishers and it got published. And I will tell you another fact. All these eight students uh, were taken by three different companies, including uh, uh, Procter & Gamble, uh, Hindustan Unilever and uh, Tata. Uh, probably you must know what is the salary package. Their starting salary is around 26,000 uh, during internship and that will be increased to 35,000. Uh, what are the students? They are from BPA. So why I am sharing this experience is that uh, undergraduate students, when they are exposed to real-time industries, uh, you know, they they have written the real problem with the industry, the existing condition with the institution, and that they made into paper. This is a key attraction for the industry from the institution. Okay, this institution is making real-time analysis. Uh, so, so professors, my dear professors, learned colleagues, students. So please keep in mind, industry needs students to get exposed to real-time problems of industry. And how you will tell them, you cannot tell them in interview, first of all, your resume should get shortlisted. For that, your resume should be very strong. So what I insist you is that start to write. Please meet some of the professors. They will guide you. They will also be one of the authors so that you can publish it and your resume looks something very different. Please make sure that your paper is going to be on a real-time problem with the industries. This is number one. We are supposed to focus, right? Uh, I think I have much taken much of the time to explain this, but if you are in BSc, if you are in PG, Please, this is my request to all of you. Right now, uh, once you complete this session, find a suitable teacher. Just uh, request them to help the, help you to start to have some interaction with the industries and start the work. I can assure you that you will get amazing placements. So when, when the research uh, habit starts among students, who is going to get benefit? Student placement. The institution is going to get benefit and the industry will automatically come to your institution. Let's say that, uh, uh, first of all, you'll be uh, attending interviews to the industry outside your campus. When many students go to the industry, automatically the industry will come closer to the institution. You don't have to invite them. They will generally come to your institution. This is the practice we have in our institution. We show the quality, we attract the industries to come to us, right? Now we will we will just see how the whole process works. Um, probably I don't have to explain this to you because again, it will be taking much of the time. Right, I will tell you what, what is expected. So now our first aim uh, to get closer to the industry is to ensure that our students are exposed to research. Research is very simple. If your students can go to the industry, identify a real-time problem, and if they can give some solution, that is what industry requires. Industry always uh, will not come and tell you we have this problem. But if you are close to them, they can reveal what is the problem. You can, you can, you and your team can sit together and you can suggest something so that the attraction gets very positive and obviously they're going to come closer. So as teachers, our, our work is to make sure that Please have a, a 
have some time to visit the industry talk with them uh, try to identify real time problems real time problems uh, and if you can suggest them by by cal- uh, collecting a lot of reviews resources if you can share with them that will be really good and we have one more practice i'll tell you now you are student they are visit- first you are making a attempt as teachers and uh, you can get one or two companies where your students can go talk with them when they come back they are writing some papers you are modifying that please add one of the employee who are in higher grades of the uh, of the company as one of the authors so what happens is that that has more value to your research again the student has more chances to get placement in the same company itself because he knows much better than the company before even he joins into the company so so that again adds lot of value so so i really wanted every one of you to think uh, in that way so this is going to help all of us right um right uh, now now uh, what i'm going to share now is for teachers and uh, uh, iqac members uh, uh, slightly useful for students as well right uh, again let me come back to the syllabus content uh, as a member course of iqac some of you must be principals of college uh, some of you must be higher level professors uh, some of you must be members of board of academics uh, the importance that you must give to your curriculum is that uh, what industry expects is 60 40 60% 60 of uh, application uh, 60% of practical and 40% of theory which is going to support their practical knowledge so if we can do some changes here uh, i think that is a that's the best thing we can give it to students so if students have a lot of experience in practical or application oriented content uh, we are going to be very successful in producing good students good research uh, so so that is the first thing that we have to start okay so every time when we as teachers every time when we sit with the uh, principal or when we sit with iqac they will be asking sir have you received uh, any funds from uh, industry uh how, why don't you start to sign mou with industry sir uh, let me make it very clear uh, getting connection with industry is as simple as you work but it all depends on how you are going to approach them right let's say for example um, let's take the host institution uh, which is in chitur right now pvk in college um so Uh, there are many industries there first to take one company which is uh, uh, amron batteries very close to you similarly every one of us will have some industries near us so i'm giving you an example so the first thing that we must do is uh, to make a visit to the company and to get some appointments through some of uh, your known people or you can also get uh, uh, let's say pvk and uh, any anybody who is working in pvk and let you must be working in amron or some of you must have a loop just go there and you tell them that uh, we will give them a free consultancy what is consultancy right uh, first thing consultancy we should understand consultancy because again consultancy is the word which you often see in iqac whether you have any mou for consultancy uh, amron is a company which uh, produces uh, batteries and uh, as professors of chemistry as professors of physics Uh, you must have a lot of ideas suggestions like safety measures though the company knows it uh, as you are teachers as you have updated your knowledge in all this stuff you can always make a visit give a lecture uh, on uh, safety measures because every company which has iso standards it is mandatory for them to have some programs with some experts uh, who are in different fields to start with let's say that you are in uh, physics chemistry department chemistry department Uh, you can uh, establish some small contacts tell the company that i'll be conducting a free uh, session for you on safety measures see the topic i'm giving you safety measures safety is very much needed in industry so they will always say yes for it so what they will do they will give you open invitation for the first time uh, uh, they may not give you any charges because it is we who went to them so it is we who goes to them or we went to them so you tell them you are going to have a small program for them Uh, and you minimize the structure don't make it open for all the employees there because you are you are missing your business there so you start with a small group you tell them sir i will first of all host it for 
only 25 employees. Let's say there are 200 employees. You take 20% of the employees or minimum is 25 employees. So make sure that you crack the training. So to, again, I'll tell you, first you make a request to them. Uh, though they don't pay you anything, they will give you a letter of appreciation saying that you have done a small training for them. That is enough for us in the beginning stage. And you ensure that you have only 20 participants uh, or 25 participants who will be attending your training. So make sure that your training is going to rock. It is going to be an excellent, excellent level and very informative. That's very important. If your training is going to be informative, these 25 participants will have a spread of mouth. They will go and tell to other employees, today I went to a program, it was so good. So what happens, the management will call you back. Uh, sir, uh, uh, whatever program you did last week to 25 members, it was very good. They found it useful. Why don't you do another program? Then you have the first file. Then you tell them, sir, why don't we have a small MOU? Why don't we have a small MOU? Small MOU for training. Okay. First, to have a MOU, because that is the basic criteria for your institution and industrial partnership. Right. Then you have MOU saying that we'll conduct uh, free trainings or something like that. First, you crack them inside, right? Then uh, once you have a MOU, your first criteria is over that you have a MOU with the industry. Then slowly try to talk with them, try to arrange internship for your students. And uh, that is how we go on. And in later stage, uh, you tell them, sir, we can also train you in uh, business sector. We can also train you in the language sector, but we have to pay a little bit. So let it be even 1,000 rupees uh, per visit. So you plan a session for 10 hours. For every visit, you charge them 1,000 rupees. So what happens in a long run, in, in one or two years, you will slowly move into the company where you train them, you know more about the company, and everybody knows you, and your relationship will increase uh, the number of students who goes into the company, and you are, will be giving some free training, and you will be charging some trainings, and again, those charges are called as consultancy, uh, which is very important for generating revenue for the institute. This is what uh, the UGC and NAC tells us. Did you generate revenue for the institution? Yes. So this is how you can very easily peep into industry, right? And slowly, again, I'm taking only one example. You can ask uh, uh, Amron Battery, uh, sir, why don't you have a small research setup in our college? Uh, we will give you one small uh, room, uh, 50 to 50 feet. Uh, so they will ask you what we are going to do there. You tell them, sir, you have R&D. Uh, you can come here and do it. Uh, we also have some good students, you know, who can help you with these things. So make some MOUs, especially for setting up a center. So what happens, Amron, in two to three years of time, your, your visit to industry will be frequent. Uh, you will be giving free training and you will be giving some paid training. Your students go there for internship. And slowly, the company will have a positive side about your institution. Then they will say, sir, this year you will take two or three students from your institution. So the students also get benefit. Whoever goes for internship will be given preference, so they get placements, and in long run, we will have a center. This is what we should learn in establishing contacts with the industry. So, so I, I, I'm, I'm sure that I have made it very simple for you, and uh, though it is a time-consuming process, I wanted you to react right now. Uh, this is a time where uh, we have a little bit of uh, free time at homes. Uh, because uh, when we go to regular colleges, we run to catch the bus, go to the campus, take classes, again, run back to home. But now we have some free time where we can spend usefully. So make a sketch. Uh, yeah, we have a very big uh, lake called Google. Jump into Google, identify, go to Google map, uh, type industries near my house. So you will Google will help you to identify many industries near you or go to Google Lens. Uh, again, it will also help you to identify many industries near you. There are different agencies. Uh, go to Indo, Indo, Indian Chamber of Commerce. Again, there also you can get the list uh, district-wise, town-wise. So this is what we should do. And uh, first thing, identify the industry. Number two, start to work. And uh, as teachers, when we keep the first step, then the head of the institution will understand that you have taken the first step and they also will be happy because uh, every one of us are going to enjoy this privilege. So, so undoubtedly, every one of us, we are going to win. So, so, so I want everybody to take some initiative.
Uh, as of for uh, big for year uh, to come this crew should take the first step so say that you you fell into a well if somebody is waiting uh, outside to help the support of uh, all members of pvk and college chitur uh, today we have spent some uh, good times today so i i, I once again uh, uh, appreciate uh, the principal sir and the iqac team plus uh, the technical team uh, supported by uh, all the professors all the participants uh, who are uh, in this presentation uh, to have a wonderful uh, beginning uh, i have lot many information to share it with you probably i will request dr malathi uh, gabriel to share this information uh, to all of you uh, thank you very much and uh, right now the time is 11:28 on my clock actually i have i have stopped 10 minutes before the allotted time because if i am going to touch the next topic again it is going to be vast and some of you may lose patience because some of the professors may have a job of cooking uh, to assist your husband or wife at home and some of the students must be hungry because they must have skipped their morning breakfast so let us not take much of their time and uh, now it is open to you to ask questions uh, what i suggest you is that please type your questions in the chat box uh, please type your questions in the chat box so that Uh, we can easily see it and respond to you uh, thank you very much uh, for your patient listening and uh, i'm sure uh, uh, you have taken good information from this day i have lot many things to share with you probably we will find some time where we can meet you in person to talk about uh, more information on industry and uh, academic collaborations thank you i request the participants to ask questions to the resource person very good morning sir sir good morning am i audible yes sir yes sir very good this is the srinivasan sir right hello srinivasan yeah yes, yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was so nice really useful but uh, had you added the very important spice of uh, using this technique during uh, or uh, after post covid situation it would have yes, been sir. more useful because i have been attending you yes, now sir. the problem is movement has been cut tight correct correct sir correct mm. movement movement has been cut tight and people were not allowed to go outside and right. how far that uh, it was so very beautiful suggestion you have made out to the yes. teaching faculty especially the students and the administration yes so, sir so now nice, such something has been had at the very important masala required that during our post covid how to contact thing. how you can make use of because now we could not meet yes, each other you are sitting somewhere i am yes, sir. Uh, during and with my travel and uh, so nice sir. and uh, yes, i am expecting that uh, with that expectation i have attended that was missed yes. <laughs> very hard thank nice sir Uh, thank th thank you very much sir now uh, i have an answer for you after covid what we are supposed to do what what we can do is that uh, i have also prepared some information uh, step by step information uh, which can be done after covid uh, as of uh, our understanding with the industries recently uh, industries which are operating from uh, america as well as which are operating from european union australia they have informed their offices in india to have the full operation only from september so this is for a kind information though the government relaxes uh, all the companies which are operating from uh, us european union and australia they wanted their companies in india to start to sir, function from september sir sorry for so, the sir, sorry yes, for sir. the sorry for the interruption yes sir because my son is also in uh, sony gsn 
now yes, they were asked entire yeah now they were asked to continue from work from home work from I home correct, till, correct. Uh, till yeah work from home till yes this uh, christmas at oh my they were also <laughs> prepared and okay, yes, okay. and uh, they were given they have started given additional yes, allowance also besides salary oh Hope that's very good. Had okay okay yeah. no, because, because, uh, because uh, they have to purchase their bench <laughs> yes yes they yes they're yes, given 25000 yes. yeah. oh very good so very good thing. of course till end of this year what you are said is going to happen what yes to sir do? yes sir i mean yes sir uh, yes sir please. yes sir yes sir i, I got it uh, sir uh, what we will be doing is that we, we can share an information which we collected from the industry last before 10 days like uh, post uh, post uh, pandemic situations and industry relations uh, i think that information will be very helpful for you it is a uh, 64 pages uh, information that we gathered from industry uh, we have no problem in sharing it with you as well as with all the participants here especially teachers because that is not going to help the students because it is all about uh, uh, putting industry and uh, institution together so that i will share it with you as well as to all the teachers here uh, uh, as participants thank you very much sir that's a wonderful information that you gave thank you so yes, for others i am uh, putting my papers yes, uh, enter the 30th till i am interested sir 30th of this month so so much <laughs> okay. very okay. good sir uh, sir we have another question from uh, from uh, mujib uh, sir kindly let us know language students can relate to industry okay uh, i am from uh, language department for your kind information uh, uh, please log into british council dot in Uh, if you have a google side by side you can uh, just log into fundings from british council dot in okay and uh, that is right. one website which can gives you lot of information about the uh, fundings for uh, language students and again u s i e f u s i e f again this is a second website which is uh, going to give you lot of information about the uh, funding opportunities which is given by america uh, actually actually u s i e f right now uh, they are planning to bring a lot of professors from us to india uh, you don't have to pay anything if your institution is very much interested you can apply it online and definitely you are going to get a faculty from american top universities uh, to your institution without spending even a single money so all professors uh, you can be from different departments please log in to usief uh, which will lead you to the higher education council office in uh, usa and uh, you can get lot many information about bringing professors from us to india where you don't have to spend single money they'll be here for a period of 3 to 6 months so it will be a good exposure for you your students to start with the research please do that and i think you have answered your questions right uh, now thank we'll you go to the uh, excellent question sir thank you for your okay very sir. short informative and really appreciable sir okay i feel very happy sir sir if possible kindly send some detail on the uh, mail sir Very thank you sir very thank you thank you sir thank you sir mm. uh, uh how to develop a curriculum for those at different nkq levels please suggest sir okay so mohan behra uh, sir uh, probably uh, we will have it as a private chat so because uh, again it is a very big uh, thing i should tell you about uh, how to prepare curriculum for nqq uh, i will definitely answer your question please uh, 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 send your uh, email here in the chat box so that we can stay in touch and i can assist you to have a very clear understanding about how to develop curriculum for different courses thank you very much mohan sir uh, any other questions please type on the right side and uh, mujib has sent uh, send the details to my email key to sm smr uh, i'm not going to send it uh, it will be done by the uh, organizer of this uh, webinar to all of you the the information whatever we have shared with you will be shared with you to your email which you have registered here right um any other questions we have uh, if not uh, over to dr s yes, malathi yes sir thank you very much for your fruitful deliberations and insightful thoughts and it okay. makes a lot yeah sir it makes a lot of difference how best the academicians they use utilize explore the opportunities in in order to have collaborations with industry and higher educational institute 
Since we have time, I request the participants to interact with the resource persons with regard to the today's lecture. Uh, uh, Marathi Madam, I think uh, I have not taken much of the time and I think I yeah. have made this session useful. Is it right, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Dissem dissemination of knowledge is done. Done. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because the participants should also feel that they have learned a little bit at least. Just an yeah. eye opener for them. It's true. Uh, right. Again, we have got information. Right, uh, sir Muhammad Safiya, sir, you can go ahead with the next process. Yeah. Now I request. Uh, 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 now uh, um, there is another question. Please send. Yeah, definitely we will share it to the participants, those who have attended for today's webinar. Uh, now I request Muhammad Shafiullah, sir. Uh, assistant Professor, Department of English, to propose vote of thanks. Morning, all of you. It is my proud privilege to propose vote of thanks. I take this opportunity to express my gratitude to the to the participants for sparing their valuable time and actively engaged throughout the webinar. I extend my warm admiration to our people. Dr. G. Anand Ritigal for his relentless motivation and encouragement to conduct such webinars in our college. Thank you, sir. My heartfelt thanks also goes to the resource person, Dr. J. Karthikeyan, sir, for his wonderful presentation and valuable inputs to strengthen the industry academia interface. I offer my sincere thanks to S. Mohammad Ismail and M. Samuel John from the Department of Computer Science for providing the most needed technical support for this webinar. I also extend my sense of gratitude to Dr. T. Malti Gabriel, coordinator of this webinar, and Dr. S. V. Ramesh Kumar and other members of the organizing committee for their systematic efforts to make this webinar a grand success. And at last, I want to thank to all those who are directly or indirectly involved in this and contributed immensely in making this mighty online webinar from our college a successful one. Thank you very much for being part of this grand event. Important right, announcement uh, to the participants, those who have attended the webinar throughout the session, they will be provided the feedback link tomorrow uh, tomorrow morning. And after submitting the feedback form, you'll be getting the certificate. Kindly cooperate. Thank you. Thank you one and all. Thank you.